بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله عليه وصحبه من ولا بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I hope I can keep this brief, but in this hopefully short video, I want to talk about gifts. So there's one true giver of gifts, and he is Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Allah has divine names about this. One of his names is Al Mu'ti. Another one is Al Wahhab. One who gives gifts. Okay, so there's uh, several benefits to understanding that these names, and there's several aspects of it. One is that whenever you give somebody a good gift, if it's for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in reality, uh, in one aspect of it, it can be a manifestation of His name, Al Al Wahhab, or Al Muati, uh, to my understanding, at least. Um, because the human heart is designed, is created to reflect his names. So when we see mercy in the creation, that is Allah creating that mercy, and it indicates and reminds us of his infinite mercy. His mercy is unlike our mercy. There's no tashbih, there is no um, like likening of Allah to his creation in, in his names, in his essence, in his attributes. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, the hadith that Allah divided his, his mercy into 99 parts. He saved, uh, he, uh, he, he saved 98 for the next world, and he put one part in this world, and because of that one part of his mercy, all the mercy you see in the creation between human beings, between animals, and so on, uh, is, is created and, and given to us there. So our attributes are all created, and they're always created. Um, there's nothing, you know, we are not uncreated. The only thing uncreated is Allah. Allah is the only thing uncreated. Everything other than Allah is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, including our attributes, including our actions, including everything physical, including everything non-physical, our thoughts, our ideas, all of these are created. That's one of the reasons why, if you think about it, you can never imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because your imagination is created. Uh, you know, it's impossible to imagine Him. Uh, you cannot imagine Him. Uh, he's greater than anything you'll ever imagine. Um, and it's actually kind of like bad form with him to try to imagine him. Uh, so we don't imagine him. Um, uh, so that's the first benefit is seeing um, that, you know, giving of gifts between people uh, can be a manifestation of his name. So, for example, if I want to give a, a, a very virtuous gift, I may give dates to a Muslim. And when they see this, they think of fasting and breaking their fast. So this is a gift. Okay. Uh, another example is Zamzam water. Uh, if someone goes on Hajj or if they go and buy authentic Zamzam water, they may give it to their friends, um, be it a not Muslim or non Muslim. When a Muslim sees this, it reminds them of Hajj, it reminds them of Umrah, it reminds them of the Prophet, so I said, it reminds, them, reminds them of the well of Zamzam. Reminds me of reminds us of the sunan of drinking that zamzam. Um, you know, uh, you get what you intend for it. So if somebody wants healing, or if you want somebody else to be healed, you can just drink with that intention, knowing that Allah is the one who who will fulfill that uh, in whatever way or manner that He He you know has willed. Um, um, so everything is limited to the will of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, another example, uh, or rather another benefit or lesson in this, is that when we receive gifts, we can see gifts as, that are really for us as coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if somebody gives us dates, gives us zamzam, uh, or, or gives us food, halal food, you know, we can see this, uh, uh, you know, if it's really intended for us, that it's coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah gave you that gift. If you find, now, when you think about it, Everything good is a, really a gift from him. So everything good that comes to us in a halal way, right? Um, it's really a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he's, he's the giver of gifts. Um, and so that means we were created to receive gifts from him. It's amazing if you think about it. Being created is like a gift from him to worship him, to get to know him. Learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean, it's an incredible gift to get to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To see him, uh, or rather to see his manifestations uh, to see him in the creation, meaning like if you see mercy, you, it reminds you of Allah and you start to see uh, all that all actions, right, uh, are created by him. That's called Tawheed al-Af'ar, the oneness of actions. And that you, you, you witness, this is called Mushahada in Arabic, you witness that everything, 
Every action is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you start to see what is behind that. Right? You see somebody just going to work, it's like, oh, well, Allah is providing for him. Allah gave him this job. Allah gave me my job, gave me my sources of risk. Right? Uh, other people, they may be relieved of that need to work. This is called, uh, 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 what's it called, tadbir? No, I'm sorry, it's another word. I forgot. <laughs> I actually forgot the word, excuse me. Um, um, uh, but uh, some people are relieved of the need to work. Maybe they have an investment or something. And um, Allah gives them that gift of not needing to work. Then they can go and study, they can teach, they can do other things. Uh, with their time, spend more time devoted to him, right? Some of his saintly types uh, are given that, uh, this like divestment. Um, you can read about that in the Hikam of Ibn Atala. So um, uh, to draw it back in, uh, the second lesson is starting to see that things that come to you and also things that come to other people when they're good and through a good means and they're really meant for that person, um, that this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. It's, it's from Him. So you see the person involved, but Allah use that person as a means to give a gift to you or to whoever the recipient is. So Allah is always giving gifts every day. There's also spiritual gifts, like um, you know the witnessing, the mushahada, uh, seeing more of Him, learning about Him, knowledge, you know, beneficial knowledge. This is a gift from Him. So see that everything good uh, is a gift from him to you. Like my phone here that I'm using is a gift from him to me. Uh, at least I hope so. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, the third one is that um, um, when we see somebody who is gifted, like we, if, if your child has a great skill or talent, we may say, oh, you have a gifted child in English, right? I actually really like that because, you know, when you understand it or interpret it correctly, it's like, yeah, Allah gave him that gift. And then we say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is, belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As he created, he gifted it, he gave it. All ability is, is created and given by him to us, right? Um, now, some of them may not be that beneficial. Some of them may be extremely beneficial, you know. Sometimes we seek things that aren't really very useful, uh, but he still gives it to us, right? He's always giving us things. Even things that we just want for ourselves. Um, I mean, they may not necessarily have a high spiritual attribution uh, or, or high spiritual elevation with it attached to it, but he still gave it to you. Like, maybe I just want to eat a cookie. And I go and I buy a cookie, I eat a cookie, and it's like, okay, well, he gave it to me. And maybe there's actually a benefit in that. Maybe I'll say salam to somebody on the way, okay, that's 10 hasanat. You know, there's all kinds of things that can be given in that. Sometimes he can give shifa with things that you would not even imagine. I've heard of one guy who, was, who drank a Coca-Cola and it was cured of cancer um, from a credible source as well. Um, uh, for one of my teachers. Um, and you'd be surprised. He can put his shifa, his healing in anything, you know. Uh, so you'd be surprised. Uh, sometimes we do things for ourselves, which are halal, as long as it's halal, right? Uh, like eating a, a halal cookie, you know. You never know what, what good can come out of that, right? If you just have husna one billah, a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, you know, I don't know, maybe something good will come out of this. You know, he could even give you a huge light, you know. He could say, yeah, shafi, and eat a cookie and be healed of something. He could do that. He can do that. He can do that. It's within his power and ability. Um, um, and also, if you like sweets or something, don't feel so bad about it. Just say, I don't know, you know, maybe you need to reduce your sweet intake, but have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you never know what good will come next is, is like the point I'm getting at here. Or what good will come on the way to doing something. Um, right? Because like, again, if you give salam to another Muslim, that's a gift because you do it for his sake. He gives you at least 10 rewards in the afterlife just for giving somebody the salam. It can help people in this world. Maybe they were in Wafla and they're woken up like, oh yeah, now, I, now I'm thinking about Allah more or something. Or maybe, you know, you never know what, could, what good can come out of things, right? Um, another lesson is that, uh, okay, so, um, what was number three? I'm trying to put it to words. Like if you have a child who's gifted, and, and that gift came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So um, when it comes to any kind of like gift that you want, you know, seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So seek your gifts, uh, credit it to the right source, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the source of all good gifts. Um, and um, seek your gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you want something, ask him for it. Like if you want a cookie, ask him. Like, Ya Allah, can I have a cookie? You know, Ya Allah, grant me a cookie. Ask him for a cookie. Um, if you want other gifts, like maybe you're a doctor and you're like, man, how do I really cure cancer? Ask him. He can show you. I know people like Dr. Ibrahim Jaffe who cured cancer on many occasions, uh, like repeatedly. They have like a track record of curing cancer. 
So it's not like it's undiscovered. It actually is discovered. A lot of people know various cures of various types of cancers, actually. Um, it's just not known necessarily to Western medicine yet, uh, though some are coming around pretty fast, especially the nursing, the, especially the nurses. Like, uh, nurses are really turning fast to holistic medicine. Um, but if you want to know something, if you want a gift, you know, go to him and ask, seek it from him. Okay, now with four things, anything is possible. This is what one of my teachers told me. Niya Sahiha, this is so important, a sound intention. That if you want to become a great healer or, uh, you know, a great anything, you want to be gifted in something, that you're going to use it for him, and for his sake, and sincerely to help people. And you're not just going to use it for yourself or just to, like, have it consume things. Like, you have a great hadh, like, hadh or hadhuth are, like, your self-interest. You're just going to have this endless, bottomless pit of greed or something that you're just trying to fill. Like, no, no. You're here, you're going to use this for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know when you use his gifts for his sake, in the right ways, inshallah, he'll reward you in the afterlife. So that's where you, what you really want to be thinking of, right? Like um, some of the old, uh, some of the ancient Muslims would write that, you know, the sincere doctor should desire to cure the poor more than he desires to cure the rich. Um, it's like a test of your sincerity, like a reminder of, of where you should be uh, uh, in, in, in using your talents, right? That doesn't mean you should be poor and desire to be poor, not necessarily. He gives you wealth uh, as well. Um, he can make you wealthy. If you want to be wealthy, you can ask him for it. You know, Yahweh, if it's good for me, make me as wealthy as is best for me. You know, grant me ghina. Ghina is that you don't need other people. You don't have to ask other people for things. So that's ghina. Ghina, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you're a millionaire. Uh, some of the Arabs, like uh, like in Egypt or something, if I use the word ghina, they think of, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be rich. It's like, well, no, that's not what it means. It means you don't need others. It means you're, you're sufficient. He suffices you, right? Allah is al-mughni, and that he can take away your need of other people and just suffice you with him. So, like, for example, some people may, may uh, no, not, not need to work. They just have an investment or, like, a retirement pension or something, uh, and, and they can just stop working and, and do other things that are uh, hopefully for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, uh, like studying Arabic, studying Islam, studying religion, uh, teaching it, uh, taking care of your family, these things. Um, other beneficial things with their time. So if he can give us that. Um, so, so, if you, so see that gifts come from Allah, including spiritual gifts, abilities, all these things are gifted to Allah, from Allah to us. Okay? And if you want some type of gift or blessing in doing things, Allah is the one who gives that to you. Seek it from him, ask him for it, and be sincere in your, in your intention with it. And then, and, then, and then anything is possible. And, and also, don't underestimate yourself. Human beings are immensely blessed. If they, knew how, if they knew what their potential was, I mean, there's a reason you don't even know it. Because probably it's so high and huge within every human being. If they, if they turn to Allah and, and, and seek their highest purpose, he, will, he can give it to you. Uh, you know, like, ask him, what is, my, what is your highest purpose for me? Uh, you know, and he can give you huge gifts. You know, he can, he can, he can give you... Because ideally, I mean, you want the keys to unlock goodness and lock up evil. So that's, that's generally like uh, the gist of what, what we really want to be as human beings, as people who are vice chairs of the earth, um, people who, who bring benefit and, and remove harm. You don't want to harm anybody. You don't want to be harming people. Um, and you don't want to be devoid of benefit where you're just like completely incapable of doing anything. You don't want to be incapable. You want him to bless you. And we want him to bless every human being. And we want to be helping each other. Um, so, uh, 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 so number one is Aniyah Sahihah. Number two is Husna Dhan Billah, a good opinion of God. Number three is Al Yaqeen Billah, certainty in Allah Ta'ala. And number four is Himma, high Himma. Himma is aspiration, like having a high aspiration. Leave it with Him, how high it goes. You know, turn, your, turn it over to Him, turn these things over to Him to make them right for you. Ask Him to make them right for you, to give you a sound intention, to give you sincerity, make you sincere. Uh, worshiper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what you want to be. That's the highest thing you can be is a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what he created you to be. Everything good comes from him. So do it his way, he'll give you more. Do it right, you know, he'll give you more, inshallah. And give him anything and he'll make it better for you, right? To take anything, take your phone. Like, okay, this is, I want to use this for you. You know, and then, and then he'll, he'll give you thoughts of how you can use it for him. Good things you can do. You can read Quran on your phone. You can read Hadith on your phone. You can... Uh, keep good relations with your kith and kin, with your family uh, on your phone. You know, there's so much, so many ways you can use your phone for him. You know, I mean, if you just look around and think of like my kitchen, 
You know, like, okay, I can cook for other people and, and give them food. I can cook for people who are needy or my neighbors. I can invite people over. I can cook for them. You know, there's so many good things you can do uh, if you just think that this is for, I'm going to use this for him. Or, or tell him, I want to use this for you, Ya Allah. You know, and he'll give, he'll give you those opportunities. Um, another one is like, uh, uh, don't miss, oh, I already talked about that, sorry. Yeah, I guess that's about correct. Uh, um, I guess I covered everything, huh? So, yes, Allah is the giver of gifts. His name, his divine names are Al-Mu'ti, Al-Wahhab, the giver of gifts. Um, personally, I need to learn the difference between Al-Mu'ti and Al-Wahhab. I still actually don't really know, so I need to read more myself. Um, I'm actually curious, like, what really are the nuanced differences between Al-Mu'ti and Al-Wahhab? Maybe it's the different types of gifts he gives. I'm not really sure. So if somebody knows, feel free to comment and educate me, um, inshallah. Um, I also recommend reading Al Imam Al-Ghazali's books in general and his book on the divine names um, in English. I think it's called, um, what's it called? The, one second. Sorry, I forgot the name of the book, but if you just Google Al-Ghazali, the divine names, or book on the divine names, you'll easily find it on Google. I recommend reading that book. It's a very good book to learn about the divine names. It's good to it's good to learn about the divine names because it helps you see the creation and it helps you see reality for what it is. Because everything, Allah is creating everything. The more we understand His creator names, the more we understand the creation, and the more we understand our purpose uh, in the creation, and the more we understand the reasons behind things, the wisdoms, uh, the more beautiful it can our lives can get. Because then we can witness uh, things on a deeper level. Because He'll inspire your heart and your soul with things. Um, but it's also kind of limited by your knowledge of him. So the more you grow in knowledge of Allah, especially the Al-Qaeda, you know, fiqh, all the ulum and deen, but the more we grow in, in knowledge of Allah, the, the wider it, that becomes and greater that becomes in our potential to get to know him. A big one is Al-Qaeda. That's a big, that's like one of the first doors for a lot of people to pass through. Uh, like until you learn the Al-Qaeda right and you get it really, and you get it down solid, that first door is just closed because you just you don't have the theological grounding yet. Um, when you study Aqidah, like studying on Aqidah Tahawiya, like Sheikh Hamza Makbul, he has a good course called Eternal Creed. It's free online. You just look it up on YouTube, Eternal Creed, Sheikh Hamza Makbul. Listen to the whole thing at least once. You know, I think I've gone through it at least six times, that book, um, in my madrasa and, and, and with Sheikh Hamza Makbul. I have done, so, I've done several khatams of it. I haven't done enough of it. I, need to, I'm, I already feel like I need at least one more khatam of it. Uh, it's an incredible book. It'll it'll greatly expand your ability uh, to get to know Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So definitely study that book if you haven't. Study it with the right people. Don't study it with the wrong people. You know, if you learn from Salafis, they're not going to teach you correctly. They're going to teach you an incorrect understanding of it. Do not study with them. Okay. Study with proper educated Sunnis who have a sanad that is like sahih and correct and uncorrupted. Uh, don't learn from the Salafis. The Salafis, they'll give you, a, I mean, there's a lot of good in what they do, um, but they just, there's certain things they do that, that they just haven't got right yet. They need to get them right. I still love them. I love all the Salafis, uh, most of them. <laughs> if you're a Salafi and you're watching this, uh, you're probably in the ones who I love, you know. Uh, I have friends who are Salafis, you know. Um, this, for, for the most part, they just, they just don't know any better yet. And once they get educated, especially the ones I know who go to Madrasa, like every single one I know, actually everyone I know who's really come to study Islam, especially if they've done time in madrasa with proper teachers, all of them left Salafism. Like I can't think of a single exception. Some of them are like really anti-Salafi now, like strongly anti-Salafi. Like I need to, you need to calm down a little bit, you know. <laughs> um, so you know, don't learn from them, but learn from the correct teachers. Like Sheikh Hamza Bull, he will teach you that book correctly. Um, so study Aqidah correctly with the correct teachers. Uh, and that will open so many doors for you to get to know Allah Ta'ala and your deen. Um, it's so important, you know, to get the Aqidah down. It's like that first door. Another door is, is fiqh. Uh, you know, we need to learn how to properly worship Allah Ta'ala. You know, even the five pillars of Islam. A lot of American Muslims don't understand these five pillars and, uh, well enough. You know, they need to at least at least one time go through a fiqh matin of one of the madahib and study it with a teacher or like an online dars and go through all five of the pillars, you know, and, and learn them, study them, right? The shahada ties in with Aqidah, but go through the other four pillars really well. Um, there's some fiqh with the shahada, but, you know, uh, go through those four pillars, salah, you know, siyam, zakat, hajj, go through those four, learn them well. I need to review them. Um, 
but learn them well so you know what you're doing, right? Because when you when you act, when you have knowledge and you act upon it, it's like it's it's amplified. You know, you get so much more out of it, right? The scholar is harder on the shaitan than a thousand worshippers who you know who are not scholars, right? So it doesn't mean you need to become a scholar, but you should need to become a student of knowledge. You know, seek knowledge with your free time, uh, get educated. If you go to Seeker's Guidance, they have all kinds of free courses. You can pick, I think at least three. I think three of the methods you can study at a basic level. On, on YouTube, you can study Maliki Medheb, the Maliki Medheb as well. Um, um, uh, you know, there's so many opportunities to study. You know, you know, pick a Medheb or whatever your Medheb already is and study the basic fiqh. You know, if you're Hanafi, go through Quluri, you know, um, and, and so on. So, uh, this video is already very long. Excuse me. I apologize sincerely. I'll try to make it way shorter, inshallah. Um, um, one last thing I want to say is that when it comes to healers, like for example, one. Uh, uh, in, in Reiki, there's attunements, right? They attune you to this or that or whatever. Um, and, you know, you don't necessarily need those, but if you turn to Allah and ask Him to, to, to open these, these abilities up for you, He can give you these abilities as long as you sincerely use them for His sake and you don't use it for your health. Like, you never use it to, you know, uh, manipulate people. Like, you never use His gifts to manipulate people. That's a way to lose your gifts. You know, and that's a good thing that if you misuse his and you abuse the gifts he gave you, that he takes them away from you because he's protecting you from abusing and hurting yourself and hurting others. So you never want to be a, a manipulator. Um, um, and if he gives you big, powerful gifts, well, just use them for his sake. You know, he can, get, he can make you really powerful if you're sincere and using them for his sake. You know? And one thing, too, is that when people have suffered from a certain problem, they tend to be really... Um, they have potential to become masters of that problem. Like if you were extremely sick with a severe illness that was very difficult, you maybe have the potential to become a great healer, right? And he can make you a great healer, you know? Um, and also there's a thing called the rooting of knowledge, that we take secular knowledge like medicine and we root it in, in sound knowledge, sound dakhita, sound theological understandings. Uh, we root it in the Islamic sciences and then it flowers and becomes something better than it ever was, right? Because the Islamic sciences give you the tools when you learn them correctly, to think properly, uh, to understand things. It can give you an understanding of, of any, pretty much any system and its reality when you have the Islamic tools, right? Like engineering, even, you know, math, science, biology, um, energy healing, you know. Islam gives you the tools to deeply understand these things. Just turn to Allah, He can teach you the realities behind these things. Um, uh, so when it comes to these gifts, you know, understand that it's Allah is the one who gives you the gifts. Um, Allah is the one who does everything, who enables you to do everything. So don't misattribute things as well. If somebody's a great healer, he's not God. He's gifted by God. That's what that means. That's a huge mistake. And may Allah protect us from that mistake if we start attributing things to the creation that only ever belong to Allah. Right? And there's no healing except Allah's healing. So no medicine heals by itself. Allah is the one who heals. That's an, very important to understand. Um, and, the, and the greater your understanding of it, you know, then the, the greater your potential uh, uh, to work for Allah Ta'ala and, and, and to be given bigger gifts that you can handle appropriately. Uh, but we, we, you, need, you need sound knowledge as a foundation. So sound knowledge. Um, I said that's point five is, is, is sound education and sound knowledge with the correct teachers. So when it comes to evil, when it comes to misunderstandings, when it comes to misguidance, when it comes to innovation, you know, bad innovation, when it comes to um, you know, evil, these things are generally taught by the people who follow those things, right? Like most people who are following, uh, uh, if somebody is, is following a religion other than Islam, they were taught that religion by somebody. If somebody thinks a certain way that's incorrect, they really were taught that by somebody. Like, every, like most ideas have a senad, a chain of transmission. Right. Most Westerners are completely unaware of their Asanid. They have no idea where their ideas come from, but it's good for them to learn and trace them. Because a lot of them go back to people who are even clinically diagnosed as actually psych, you know, psychotic or insane. A lot of them actually were like the sexual revolution. You can look up, so look up the thinkers. Those people were really insane. They were nuts. And they were diagnosed that way early on. Like they actually have clinical diagnoses as being insane people. You don't take knowledge from insane people. You don't make a theological or philosophical underpinning of an entire society based on the the insane. Like, no, you go to the sane people, the thinkers, the blessed people, you know, the the, the tucky, the one who only who, who fears God, the one who is sincere. You know, the, the Muslims are the best people to take knowledge from, right? And we have standards of, of who you learn from. 
The Western world doesn't have these standards, and they took from people who were hugely misguided. David Hume, I mean, his, like he, like he for example, is, is the one who came up with the idea that miracles just always have a scientific explanation. Like, when you hear atheists say that, they're, they're just re reiterating David Hume's uh, paper called On Miracles. Don't read it uh, if, you're, if you're, like, shaky in your faith, if you're really, really shaky. But if you read it and you've, if you've studied any, any Islamic philosophy on a basic level, if you read any Ghazali, if you read any... If you're even remotely, basically studied in Islam, even if you're not even a Muslim, you can read this and be like, this guy's making, like, his syllogisms are complete nonsense. Like, even if you're an atheist, but you understand basic philosophy and syllogisms and logic, if you just read his stuff, it's like, this is actually illogical. Like, he breaks several rules of logic. His syllogisms don't make any sense. They're just, uh, uh, they're absurd, you know? <laughs> and so it's like, these are the people they take their knowledge from, you know? It's like, no wonder they're so confused, you know? Um... It's like they rejected the church, but they didn't want the truth, so they just fell into a, worth, a worse falsehood, which is atheism. Christianity is better than atheism, you know. Um, and a lot of the Christians even still take from these similar, a lot of similar philosophical thinkers as, as the atheists, you know, like the sexual revolution. Like, how can you be a Christian and also believe in the sexual revolution? It doesn't make any sense, you know. I turned to the guy was insane, and he did terrible things, you know. Like, the, so just be careful who you take your knowledge from. It's really important, you know. Um, like the Shia, for example, like we all know they're, they're hugely, they're making huge mistakes and they're wrong. You know, it's very easy to objectively discover that the Shia are wrong, you know, but, but why is a Shia a Shia? If a, Shia, a person is a Shia, how did he become a Shia? He didn't learn from Shias. He didn't learn from the right people. If he learns from the right people with an open heart and he's sincere to Allah, like I want the truth. Like I, it doesn't matter what people think of me. It doesn't matter what my family thinks. It doesn't, the truth is, is important enough to me that I'll choose it. Over any over falsehood in any in any circumstance, for the sake of Allah, you know, I'm not going to follow the people of falsehood. You know, I want I want I'm not going to follow false ideas. You know, it doesn't mean you become a hater and you become violent. It, that's, that's not at all what that means. It means that you you accept it when you are when it is presented to you and is clear to you. Okay, that's what that means. So seek knowledge from the right people. Um, turn away from people who you know are clearly wrong. You know, like Shias. The Salafis, I mean, they say a lot of things that are true and that are correct, but they have some big mistakes uh, as well, uh, especially in their Aqidah. Um, and they have a spectrum as well, so it's hard to really talk about them uh, so briefly. But, um, and it's not really my point of this channel. Um, but point being, like, don't take your knowledge from them. Um, if you're really educated and you get to a higher level of, of, of study and you have a good foundation, then you can turn to them and you can easily pick out where they're making their mistakes. But if you're not on that level yet, don't learn from them. Okay, don't learn from people who you know are wrong and who I'm telling you are wrong uh, until you're ready to dissect and you're, and you're educated enough that you can pick out their mistakes and you have an objective behind learning from them, like, you know, helping someone else who doesn't see their mistakes yet, you know, for example. Um, so be careful who you learn from. Learn from the right people. Um, and you can ask Allah, grab me good teachers. Who are the teachers best for me? Ask Allah and be sincere. If you're sincere, Allah will give you, uh, you know, will give you what you ask, inshallah, if it's a good thing you're asking for. Or I'll give you something better, you know, like in the afterlife or something. Um, so, okay, short video of 28 minutes. I apologize. I don't know how people are going to watch this long. I saw what I could do. Hope it was beneficial.